Hey, this is Phil, and this is part two of implant planning. So we've created our panoramic curve, and we've mapped our nerve. So what next? Let's go ahead and take some measurements, and there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can, number one, select your little ruler, and I can zoom in and first find where I want to take my measurement, change my slicing and my angles, and now do a single click from wherever I want to begin measuring to the next click. And you can see 9.2 millimeters. If I want to take another measurement, I go back to my ruler and I can take another measurement. And down below, you can see I have two measurements. Again, I can hide or change the color or delete each individual one or delete both. That's one way to do it. Another way, if I hit my little drop down triangle, I can select multi measurement. And now I can take as many measurements as I want without having to go back and forth to my ruler. When I'm done, notice I'm still on my measurement tool. Just change it back to my selection tool. Your measurements will be most accurate if you capture them in your cross-sectional view or your axial view for mesial distal measurements. The panoramic curve measurements will be pretty close, but because this view is created from how I create my curve, or I can change the slice thickness, it can affect the accuracy of your measurements. So use your cross-sectional views for your buccal lingual dimensions and your height dimensions and use your axial view for measuring and restorative spaces from a mesial distal perspective. And you can also use the axial for buccal lingual measurements too. And by the way, you can see that I'm zoomed in on my cross sectionals down below. And let's zoom back out. Another way to zoom in on that area is under my curve slicing tab, which where we are. And this little icon right here is region of interest tool. Go ahead and select that. And now I can crop out the maxilla, select OK, and it gets rid of the maxilla and all of my views and gives me a larger canvas to work in, making it easier and more accurate as well. And one more thing to be conscious of is you can see in my cross-sectional view, this is 150 micron slice, very, very thin, obviously much thinner than the width of, a, of an implant. So you have to be conscious of what's happening to the mesial and distal of where you are. So for example, I have to do one of a couple of things. So first of all, I can either go back and forth and evaluate the entire area for implant placement, or even better, I can switch this to a three by three, maximize my view, and now you can see I'm looking at 1.1 millimeter cuts times nine. That's essentially 10 millimeters of edentulous space that I'm evaluating in one view. And on my right hand side, all of my orientation bars are still available to me. So I can zoom in and you can see the line on the left correlates to what's happening in my mesial view here. And then the line on the right is my distal aspect. And the one in the center is my center view. And you can also see it over here as well. And I can still change the angle of all of my views from this orientation. And this is a much better view to evaluate the entire space. Again, if I'm looking at just 150 micron slice, I don't know what's happening two millimeters to the mesial or the distal. Maybe there's a root tip, maybe there's something there, pathology that I should be concerned about before placing an implant. So you wanna be conscious of evaluating the entire area and not just the native resolution of that particular scan.